Well, it's that time of year again where the United States is threatening military action on cartel members over Mexican soil with possible airstrikes and possible U.S. Special Forces intervention. Now, of course, Mexico is not about that life. They want nothing to do with any of this military intervention. But the United States is getting closer and closer to designating cartel members um, and putting them on the terror list. And yes, there is an actual list. Now, in this video, we're going to be going over who's saying what, what the counter arguments are, and if there really could be a long-lasting conflict with the cartel members through military action. So let's go ahead and dig into this. So yeah, there is an actual terror list. You can see this list over on the CIA website. And the implications of being put on this list and being designated as a terror unit or terror group is really bad for the cartel. Because this would open up the floodgates for the entire U.S. government to pitch in more resources, bring in more agencies together to actually fight the cartel um, all together. Because right now, really the ones who are fighting the cartel are the guys at the border, Homeland Security, some FBI agents, and the National Guard. Beyond that, if the cartel make it into the United States, it becomes a localized fight with like Metro Police or undercover agents maybe trying to do some sort of drug bust. And that's what the biggest argument is of letting cartel members or putting cartel members on the terror list is that the United States wants a more cohesive to fight against the cartel. Now understand this, the United States is a very unique country where it's one cohesive country, the United States. However, every state has their own issue. As far as dealing with cartel issues, and really we should put border issues along with that, a lot of northern states and other states not on the border regions really are not thinking about cartel issues or border issues because it's just not affecting them. If you're somebody from South Dakota, you're not really worrying about what Texas is doing on the border because you're not having an issue of migrants just walking over on your farmlands. So we have to understand from the United States perspective, there's sort of this divide really among citizens, but also amongst the government who represents the citizens that not everybody is so focused on the cartel. And maybe we shouldn't designate the cartel as a terror unit because the cartel is already in the United States throughout the United States. So once you designate these cartel members as a terror unit or a terror group, you now have countless amounts of cartel members throughout the United States who are technically operating as a terror unit in the United States. So that is a massive escalation of force. And this is something we, we really have to think about as far as just designating all cartel members as a part of a terror unit. Now, one really big underlying issue is that when we generalize the Mexican cartel, that is not a safe bet because there are many different cartel groups and cartel members throughout Mexico and beyond, not only in Mexico. So understand by saying, well, we're going to designate all Mexican cartel members um, a part of a terror organization, this leaves room for the cartel to really sort of unite and really form almost a coalition to fight against the United States to prove their worth and to prove their point and the United States needs to be very careful because this could be an escalation of force. Now I am not downplaying the fact that um, the United States needs to do something to compete bat against the, the cartel and the Mexican cartel, if you will. But again, when you designate them all into one organization and one terror group, this can become a massive problem for the United States, where all these groups who sort of already have beef amongst one another, it's not like they're totally united. Some of them are more united than others. They could all form a coalition if you organize them into one group. Now, this year in particular, 2023, the United States has seen a massive influx of migrants trying to escape from Mexico or come into the United States for a better life. Not all of that is because of cartel members, but a lot of that is because of cartel members who are trying to smuggle goods and services through these migrants or themselves are just walking right over into the United States and they're becoming an issue um, on state side. In fact, check out this clip from Reuters. These scenes of thousands of migrants gathered at the U.S.-Mexico border are reminiscent of the influx the country saw before U.S. President Joe Biden in May rolled out a new policy to deter illegal crossings. Within a month, those tough measures, such as deporting migrants and banning re-entry for five years, drove the border crossing rate down some 70 percent. But four months on, and the early deterrent effects appear to be wearing off. Record numbers of migrants in the thousands have crossed into the United States in recent days, with many more still arriving by bus and cargo trains to Mexican border towns. 
The surge could represent a looming political challenge for Biden. The big problem we see is that it could become a humanitarian crisis. Irregular border crossings are being encouraged, generating organized crime and human trafficking. These are the risks we see if decisions are not taken promptly. Experts say the U.S. lacks the capacity to detain and process migrants at the border, often making it impossible for the administration to carry out the harsh penalties it announced in May. Now again, like I said before, not all of these migrants who are crossing over into the United States are bad people or are of these cartel member groups. However, it does open the door for the mass influx of all these people walking through into the United States. You you got to assume there's one or two cartel members who are in that group or who are involved with the organized crime within that group of trying to get paid to get these people safely over into the United States, only for them to be returned back to Mexico. So that's why it's becoming a massive issue for the United States. But here is what the real underlying issue is. Now, here's what the real underlying issue is, and I need to be very careful how I word this because YouTube will end up censoring this or end up uh, taking down this video. The United States government is saying that cartel members are indirectly taking out U.S. citizens through like white powdery substances and those things that people take to make them feel better. If you catch my drift, a lot of it is grown in Colombia. We'll get to that in a second. But you can't say what the exact words are because on this platform, they just don't allow it. So understand, uh, U.S. citizens are unfortunately being taken out left and right by the addiction problem we have in the United States. And again, a lot of this is being supplied through cartel members, through Mexico, through Florida, through California, etc. Now understand, the United States technically is already taking military action, but not necessarily a direct route through military action. I mean, we have one of the largest border missions in recent history where all of Texas is deploying a lot of their National Guard. You have active units who are also going down to the border. When I was in the 101st Airborne, um, my unit who just got back from Afghanistan, um, they ended up going straight to Mexico a year later around the Mexican border. Um, it wasn't a fun mission, but it was a mission mission that Donald Trump had um, instated, and it was a mission that needed to be done because of the influx of people, migrants coming in through the United States, and of course a lot of that were cartel members. A little more black ops and a little more undercover is that you do have U.S. Special Forces Group who are designated for South America who do work with the Colombians and other uh, nations in South America who are dealing with farmers who are supplying the cartel members with the goods they need to make it into the United States. Now, we know and don't know if there is a direct action role through the U.S. Special Forces actually fighting uh, cartel members or finding these farmers, but nonetheless, we have a lot of evidence to believe and there are some documentaries out there who do say, yes, the U.S. Special Forces actually do fight cartel members one on one, not on Mexican soil, but at least down in Colombia. We also need to understand that you have states like Texas who are just doing whatever they need to do to protect their country. And this really is instigating a problem with Texas because they're seeing this as uh, broken treaties. Um, the state of Texas has such a massive issue that the governor and the mission that's happening down in Texas, they've deployed things like these buoys over here where my cursor is. And these buoys have actually um, drifted over onto the Mexican side. Now that has been solved and it's back on our side. But nonetheless, the U.S. government actually got a little annoyed because Texas did this without following government orders, didn't ask anyone to do this. But it goes to show how drastic the issue is getting, especially for a state like Texas, where they really truly have military forces indirectly fighting the cartel. Now, of course, the Mexican president is very outspoken and he says, absolutely not. We want nothing to do with airstrikes on our soil. We don't want special forces on our soil. We want you off of our soil. And the United States has been getting rather annoyed with Mexico recently beyond the fact of Mexico not really being able to handle their cartel members. A lot of people even say, well, cartel are in the Mexican government. So, of course, they're not going to allow for the United States to intervene. But again, Mexico was saying they don't want to turn into another Afghanistan and they don't want to be partnered with the United States in any sort of coalition or military force in their own country because that could further destabilize Mexico as it is already kind of destabilized internally. 
Also understand this, recently, as in like a week or two at the time of making this video, Mexico had an independence parade where they sort of showed their true cards and their true face of where they stand as far as being partners with the United States. During the Mexican um, Independence Day military parade, they had groups like Russia marching in their parade, and they also had the Chinese marching in the parade. And the reason why this could be problematic for the United States is because it goes to show that Mexico is willing to work with the common enemy of the United States. Now, of course, Mexico doesn't have any issues with these countries. Uh, they even said they invited everybody to march in this parade. Even Ukraine was really annoyed about this. But nonetheless, if Mexico is allowing China and allowing Russia to march in their independence parade, it really does go to show that the Mexican president is not too worried about what the United States States thinks, but more important, what the United States wants to do to help Mexico and to intervene in Mexico. Now, of course, I understand why Mexico might not want F-16s or F-22s uh, flying over their country, but nonetheless, the United States wants to do something and they want to do something quick because, again, U.S. citizens are falling left and right due to the cartel supplying substances over into the United States. Something to look out for during this political cycle is that a lot of presidential candidates and a lot of people of Congress are really pushing this narrative and really trying to push this uh, motive of we need to take the cartel a little more serious. So make sure you be careful and understand what the implications are here when all of a sudden you designate the cartel as a terror organization. I'm not here defending the cartel. I don't think they're the best of people and the cartel will even admit that. They know what they're doing. I'm, you're not insulting them by saying, hey, you guys are not necessarily the best people out there. But again, pay attention because this is going to be a really hot button topic is designating cartel members as a terror group and really starting to bring the fight directly to cartel members, not just on the border where it's all a defensive mission and we wait for them to come to us. The United States is truly, truly wanting to bring the fight over into the cartel, but it all starts by designating them as a terror group. And I might as well put this in this video because this is where it all sort of stemmed with the United States saying, you know what, we now need to attack cartel members directly. These cartel members kidnapped and took out U.S. citizens. And interesting enough, the cartel said, hey, look, this is our apology letter. We have no idea why they did that. We did not order them to do that. And they even turned their own in. So the cartel is willing to turn on one another. We know that. But what's also interesting is the cartel is willing to actually apologize. So there is a little bit of wiggle room here to actually maybe talk to the cartel or to work with the cartel. Maybe not in the sense of getting every single member to completely stop what they're doing. But nonetheless, the door is open and, and the cartel has enough sense to realize that the United States is after them. And the cartel does not want this to happen to them. So it's really interesting that they actually put out an apology letter saying, hey, sorry, it wasn't us. It was these guys. Please don't come after us. But let's be honest, ultimately what it comes down to is whether or not the Mexican government and really the Mexican president is willing to allow boots on the ground within Mexico. Mexico truly needs to figure out their own situation and the last thing they want is for the United States to come into their country because it really does undermine the work that they're doing and it makes the government look bad. I mean, oh my gosh, you're relying on the United States to come help you and now we have fighter jets flying over our country. And also this would not be a good fight for the United States. This would be way too complex and so m dealing with Mexico, dealing with all these different cartel organizations, I don't see this truly happening in the near future of actually designating cartel members as targets or military targets, especially if Mexico is not willing to work with the United States. And like I showed you this map before, I have no idea how the United States would be able to even somewhat start this fight or campaign. Where would they go? Are they going to go to Mexico City? Are they going to go to the south of Mexico? You have a lot of different tasks and options that the United States would have to figure out. And just like in Afghanistan, where the United States was working in the country of Afghanistan, it was a very diverse culture out there. You had different factions fighting against the United States. And the exact same thing would happen in Mexico. But the biggest issue in Mexico is these guys don't wear a uniform. They're not fighting for a cause other than just making money. So this would be, in my opinion, an even harder fight of an already armed group. These guys already have combat experience and they're already in the United States. So the United States would put themselves in a very disadvantageous um, position to where it would work against the U.S. military real quick if all of a sudden we start military action over Mexico. 
So, yeah, that's currently what's going on with the U.S. government. Again, this seems to always be a hot-button topic where a lot of people are saying, well, let's go and fight the cartel. Let's bring the military to them. But I don't think it's that simple. I think it's a very complex issue, and it's a very unfortunate issue for families who have dealt with loss due to cartel members bringing substances into the United States. Eventually, I hope we figure this out. In my opinion, I think it all starts with education and better rehab programs for U.S. citizens. I don't think the answer is flying F-22s over Mexico and trying to find cartel suspects. Because again, we are bringing the fight to the farmers down in South America. Um, you can go check out some documentaries and go check out some research on that. Um, that's as direct as I think the U.S. will ever get if we're going to bring military intervention through these targets. I don't think the answer is flying and uh, attacking targets in Mexico. I think that'll worsen relationships with Mexico, where our relationship is already kind of weird, where Mexico allows the Russians and the Chinese to march in their parade. Nonetheless, we'll see what happens in the next uh, upcoming political debates and what the government is truly going to do with these cartel members.